seven kilometres in, and all the favourites were together, including Dylan Bowman, Yang Lon Fei, Andrew Tucky, Scott Hawker, and Francois Dane. The chase pack also had several other contenders keenly in pursuit. This part of the course features a highly technical stretch that traverses a rough, boulder-strewn path. It's the first real test for the runners and requires absolute concentration. For the middle of the pack, it's steady as she goes. There's a long day ahead. So at this point, it's about settling into a rhythm and moving cautiously through the rocks. One wrong step could easily lead to serious injury and an early end to the day. up with the leading group on their way down the famed Glen Raphael Drive. Through the clearing mist we could see Perna Tamang of Nepal ahead of Julian Corrier, Yan Long Fei and Ludovic Lancelot. All of them were moving with purpose as the clouds and fog slowly started to burn off over the Megalong Valley. But with plenty of miles left to go, the race was still wide open. Scenic world, more nervous runners were on the start line as the 50km race was about to begin. The distance of this race might be half the longer way, but it comes with added intensity, and from the gun there's a noticeable difference in the speed of the runners. Heading the field early was Danny Andres, who skipped away to a small lead ahead of Andreas Ramonis, Luke Preston and Henri Coombs. Our leading lady was Sydney local Emma Ryland, who looked to be having the time of her life. The 50 kilometre course essentially follows the second half of the 100, once again leaving the hardest part for last. The elevation profile is intimidating to say the least, and it's the smart runners that typically fare the best. Back out at Narrow Neck and the front in the 100 remained unchanged with America's Dylan Bowman and Francois Dane of France in hot pursuit of the lead four. Small gaps separated the chasers with Scott Hawker ahead of John O. O'Loughlin and Andrew Tucky. Here we also catch up with the women's leader and find Cassie Scallon from the United States forcing the pace. This is one of the most scenic and fun parts of the course. The stunning views of Narrow Neck give way to an epic descent down to the valley floor. It's a highly technical section with stairs, ropes and ladders, testing your metal and fatiguing legs. The early arrivals quickly skip through, with the midfield using it as an opportunity to gather themselves before the next leg. So much fun. Woohoo! So about 21 k's in at the top of the almost at the terrace ladders, so yeah, nice, nice watch for a break. While the field at the 100 continue their way down the ropes and ladders, at the front of the 50 is Andreas Ramonis, keenly being pursued by Matty Abel, always happy to smile for the cameras. Next through in third is a fast-moving Luke Preston. It wasn't much later that our first woman, Emma Ryland, also passed by the 10-kilometre point, with Wes Gibson clearing the way. On the other side of the mountain range, we catch up with Cassie Scallon, who was holding onto a narrow lead entering the Dunphy's camp checkpoint at 31 kilometres. Hot on her heels was China's Dong Li, who was in and out of the aid station in a matter of seconds. In third was a relaxed Amy Sproster. What's your plan for the rest of the race? Just hang in there. <laughs> From here, competitors head out along Iron Pot Ridge. Being an out and back section, Runners cross paths, allowing the front of the field to get an idea of the lead they have on their chases. Unfortunately though, it was here that major drama unfolded, with the front four taking a wrong turn. 
In the heat of battle, they had missed a course marker and not completed the return journey. It meant a time penalty would be enforced that fundamentally altered the state of play. There was a little loop. Yeah. There was a clearly marked turn where we were supposed to do the loop. Yeah. And when we saw the turn, we took it. Because, and there was a marshal there, but she was up above us and she, didn't, she wasn't there to like tell us which way to go. So you've been held back? So we got to hang out for a few minutes. Inheriting the top spot was New Zealand's Scott Hawker, an experienced campaigner who resides in Katoomba and knows the course well. Being aware the penalised runners would be in hot pursuit made for lots of pressure, and with more than half the race remaining, it was still wide open. For spectators, it meant for an exciting finish.